welcome to this week's video. So today we are going to be drawing Aladdin's shiny lamp and we are going to be using some of the skills with our pencils that I mentioned in the quick tips video this week. If you haven't seen that I will link a card up above for you to go and check that out but all you need is pencil and paper so let's go. So here is a sneaky peek at how our picture turned out and as you can see I'm drawing Aladdin's lamp today using pencil and a black and white photo. There's also a list of things you might need if you want to try it at home, so by all means pause the video and jot those down. So step one is to have a good look at your reference photo and observe the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And I'm just showing those darkest dark areas with my finger here. So the second step, step two, is to make an accurate sketch of your picture. And remember to use a light pencil, so that's an H pencil if you've got one. If you haven't got one then just remember not to press too hard with say an HB pencil because you don't want those lines to be really visible at the end. So to make your accurate sketch then you can trace your drawing and that's okay if you're just using this exercise to practice with and it will be a quick way to get those accurate drawings down without having to worry about spending a lot of time getting everything in the right place and in the right proportion. Of course you can freehand it if you want to or if you want to practice your accuracy drawings. Another way that you can transfer your drawing is using the grid method. So step three then. I began at the top of the picture because pencil can be a bit smudgy and this will minimise any of that pencil going onto the rest of your drawing. And I'm starting to work on the darkest areas first with a soft pencil. So I've used a 2B pencil to start with, but again if you've only got an HB pencil then you can vary the pressure that you apply on your pencil to get those different tones. So working on the darkest areas first isn't the only way to draw this picture. But often, if you start with the lightest areas, it's easy not to go dark enough. And that can make your picture look flat. If you've only got the mid-tones in, it won't pop out of the page and you won't get that 3D shiny look that you're after. So to make something look shiny then, you do need a big difference between those lightest areas and the darkest areas. And that difference is called contrast. So I began at the top of the drawing and that was just to minimise the smudging because pencil can smudge a bit, especially as you're building up those layers as graphite is naturally shiny. So this can be a good thing for blending but you don't want it all over your hands so if you start at the top then you're less likely to spread it all over the place. You can also put a piece of paper or a tissue under your hand as well and that will help to stop the smudging. So step four is to work over your drawing adding different layers. And you can use different pencils if you've got them. So you can start off with the 2B like I did and then gradually go to the softer pencils. So remember the softer pencils have the higher numbers. So if you want to go softer from a 2B, you can then go to a 4B, 5B, 6B and so on until you've got the darkest tones that you need. And also remember when you're doing your shading that we're not drawing a 2D object, we are drawing something that have, has curves to it. So when you're doing your shading, remember not to do harsh straight lines across the page because then that will be more difficult to blend in and it won't look as realistic. And remember too that when you're doing pencil you need to do as many layers as you can to get the best result. Lots of light layers gives a really nice effect and it also makes it easier if you want to rub anything out or to lift off any areas with your eraser to add highlights and that will do towards the end. So if you haven't got a, spl a spludging, <laughs> a blending tool like this, you can use a tissue instead and that works just as well. 
and that's step five to blend. Other things that you can use are a paper stump, a tortillion or a tissue or anything like that that's nice and soft that doesn't matter if it gets dirty. And using this sort of method to blend, the smudging technique will help you get a really nice even gradient between those darks and those lights. And if you need to, once you've done this, you can repeat the process so you can go in and add more layers again if you think that those darkest areas have been dulled a bit by the smudging. So you can see now that we've got those darkest areas and the blended areas, all that's left to do is to add some highlights and adding highlight is step number six. So you can do this with a small eraser like I've got or a kneaded eraser or if you haven't got either of those then you can use blue tack as well because that works really well to lift off some of that graphite. And picking out those highlights really helps finish the picture off nicely and makes those shiny areas really stand out and pop. And after this, the picture is done. Well, that's all for today, Architects. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a comment and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next week for our quick tips video on Tuesday and our regular Architects video on Friday. Bye.